If you're looking to integrate LogSeq and Zotero, then hopefully this is the video for you. I'm going to explain in step-by-step -step beta how to get LogSeq and Zotero to play nicely together. If you're in the academic writing process, even if you don't use Zotero, maybe it's a time to switch over or to actually use some sort of bibliographic referencing tool. Hopefully it will simplify your life a little bit because I look back with some nostalgia on my bachelor's thesis, which I wasted a lot of time doing references and trying to get the correct format, etc., etc. I'm just going to go into a quick introduction of what is Zotero. I'm going to give a little bit more context about this bachelor's thesis that was in the past. So if you just want to skip ahead to the integration, use the timestamps. But starting from the top, Zotero is a referencing and bibliographic management and citation software, and it's open source and free. Although if you want to exceed a certain amount of storage, so 300 megabytes of storage, you will have to pay on an annual basis. But for an entry level person who doesn't have that many articles, it is free for all intents and purposes. So a lot of academics use it in managing their, their references in their writing process. I am not in academia and I'm not an academic writer, but I do have a little bit of experience writing my bachelor's thesis 10 years ago and this is the rambling context now. I wish that I had something like Zotero to manage my references. It is really a fantastic software and makes your life a lot easier. So I have recently moved back to South Africa and I was at my parents' house for a few weeks. I was going through one of my old files, ring-bound files of all the PDFs that I'd printed out and written on. And I do think there's some value in that process, but my workflow when I was doing my thesis was completely scattered. I was not very systematic in how I recorded everything and I was having to go through like the literally the day before I handed in trying to sort out my references and make sure that everything was in the right place. I'm sure there must be some errors in my thesis. I, I can only imagine doing it at, at three in the morning before handing in it was not ideal. But someone in one of my other videos commented about the Zotero integration and I thought, hey, let me double on this and think back with nostalgia on the mistakes that I have made and what I could have done. So that's a whole bunch of personal information and random context, but let's now get into making LogSeq and Zotero play nice. You'll need to create a, a profile on Zotero, which is on their web portal. So I've just created one here, um, one stuttering mine just for the example, and I've also downloaded the application onto my PC. Now, the great thing is that you can then add all your books or references into a folder in the Zotero library. So if I add a book, I can enter the details here, but even that I think is a little bit of a waste of time because there's this really cool feature where you can say, enter your ISBN number for your book. So let me just go to an example of a book that I might need, so Craig's soil mechanics and if I go to Amazon dun dun dun, and I find the ISBN number here let me just copy that and then I can add let me use my web application or my desktop application I can just add the ISBN number there and then the book comes up with all the right reference materials on the right here, which is crazy. That, that's a, a win in and of itself. Let me just do this. Um, I know another book that I needed would be, you know, just to prove this is not um, a one-off one case, Soil Liquefaction. I think it was Bean and Jeffries was the author of the book. Let's see. And yes, I think this might be it. Mike Jeffries and Ken Bean. And again, get the ISBN number there and then go to Zotero and voila, my book. Now, the other cool thing is you can just drag and drop your journal articles or PDFs into this and it will automatically recognize well, the few that I've tried uh, for the most part. Let me just find them on my second screen here quickly in my my downloads folder. I 
think this was one of them. And it takes a second, but then it uploads the the PDF and it finds the, I mean, I, I just downloaded this straight from the internet. It automatically populates the bibliographic material for you. And then another one that I found Again, same thing, all that material is automatically processed. So that is a win in and of itself, you know, just to show why this could be so cool. I mean, you saw my bibliography, which had to be typed out manually. If I now go to Zotero and I select these three or four books, let me say create bibliography from items. Uh, let's use, I think it was this Harvard method that we had to use. And if I say copy to clipboard, I can then copy that and paste it directly into whatever program I need, which is just amazing. But that's not how one uses a tarot with um, LogSeq. I mean, you can do it like that if you want to print your bibliography or, or copy your bibliography in. If I type forward slash, which brings me up as command options, and then I type Zotero and I click on that. It says they first set up Zotero API key and user group ID first. Okay, so let's do that. So I go to my Zotero and I look for um, my profile and then settings. And here you'll see I've got, let me just zoom in a little bit. And then I go to feeds forward slash API and you will see here it gives me the opportunity to or the ability to create a new private key so let me call this demo and then save now i copy this number here or this key and then i go to my uh, log seek now i've done the same thing in a demo database so i've switched from my personal database but it's, it's the exact same screen on the web app and the, the desktop app now i enter that zotero api key and I go to my user name, or let me just go back to feeds over there. And my user ID is this number over there. Obviously you won't see this, but you know, that's where you go and find your ID. And then I will leave all of this open for now. So I want to come back to this part later, but for now let's go and leave it open. So now let me try this and if I say Zotero, it will allow me to search. So let me search for shear, for instance. And there we go. Shear wave velocity of gold tailings. Very interesting stuff. For when I was doing my, my bachelor's, of course. Now, you'll see here that it's got all the, the reference information, but it's also got this attachments piece here. But this is, a, but I've got this warning message, which is, well, not a warning message, but it says this is a Zotero imported file and I need to set the Zotero data directory. So if I try and open that there, it takes me to Zotero, but I don't want to do that. I want to be able to open it in LogSeq. So I go back to my LogSeq settings. This is zoomed out a little bit. So let me go back to settings, editor, Zotero settings. And now I just type in this exactly as they've got here. So users, Dario, Zotero, and I don't click that add all button. It's quite tempting, I know, from a UI perspective, but I, I can load each one individually. This one will add everything into my database. We'll add all the, the files and the references. So if I just leave that there and I now go here to my, uh, the same article, I now have the opportunity to press or the option to press open. So if I open that, there's a little bit of an issue. It says missing PDF. So this, this missing PDF, I think I've just made an error in the settings. Let me just quickly go check that. I'm gonna leave this in here in case this helps someone because I've just played with this a little bit this afternoon. Ah, there we go. See settings. If I go back to this piece, then I can say open. Voila, that's beautiful. Now I can access this and zoom in and it's a full-blown PDF reader. Now, I'm, I'm sure people are busy developing workflows where you can like copy 
text because I mean the, the text copier here is pretty amazing. Um, copy text and then paste it, but I'm not going to get into that. I'd love to play around with this at a later stage, but not quite yet. But what I will do is hypothetically, if I was writing some sort of literature survey, let me close this. Let me say literature survey here. And then I want to write a part from my thesis and let's see, I'm going to just copy something here. So the terminology of a soil being wet or dry of critical is also presented in the literature. And this would be referencing two different pieces. I think I've only put one of them in my, um, in my Lozotero database as, as an example, but then I would just say the at, um, or Zotero and the piece that I'm looking for is Craig. Craig soil mechanics. Great. And then I can just continue. Why I'm doing this is so that at a later stage I can hypothetically control a replace this at Craig soil mechanics with the correct referencing system, which would be Craig's 2004 or the Harvard referencing system or whatever it might be. I know that there are other ways to do this uh, using latex, but this is just how I would do it in my workflow so that I can at least go and find all of those references later. So that's about it. Just want to give a shout out here to my sisters. I'm going to send in this video because they're both working in academia. So hopefully this can be of some use to them and you, whoever's watching the video. I really hope it helps. Please let me know what you thought and look forward to seeing you back soon. Cheers.